poor seafaring chap, quite out of his head, yet three hours earlier, as sane as you and I. There are some poisons which can cause sudden dementia and death, but Constable Roberts insisted the captain ingested nothing the entire evening. What information is wanted? I'd be interested to see Inspector Lestrade's report of the captain's autopsy tomorrow. Though I don't expect the police physicians will discover much. We don't need much. Holmes, what do you know? I know that we have happened upon a great adventure. No, I should say, rather, a terrible adventure has happened upon us. Perhaps even for us. And I know that just now, my friend, I feel quite afraid. Not Sherlock Holmes. I do not consider fear to be necessarily weak or cowardly, Watson. On the contrary, it can be a most powerful ally, a motivator to action. Then come, let us act while I stand here in the street to gaze, Watson, and ponder this face of London so seldom seen, so unlike its face of day, bright and wild, with its teeming masses. Two cities is our London. None but our own Charles Dickens could describe such duality in terms so true, so beautiful. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Now you make me afraid. In a good way, I hope. I do rely upon your help, old man. And you shall ever have it. I suppose I am a bit. 
Never have I seen even a glimmer of such paternal behavior. Well, how could I possibly send him out so late? Particularly when little Simpson is still quite so to the skin. You sent that child into the river to capture this rat? Paternal behavior, I take it all back. Stay your condemnation, Doctor. I most certainly did not send him into the river. He merely noticed my interest in the rodent and of his own free will dived in. But hold! There are people in this world, Watson, who daily coexist with creatures such as these. Regrettable, but true. Simpson holds no greater fear of vermin than other children might of a puppy or a kitten. Any other problems today, sir? Just one? Yes. What precisely is the problem? As to that, I must beg your indulgence. Now, be a good fellow and tidy up the room while I rush down onto the door. A visitor at this hour? I presume the lateness of the hour has to do with her concern for anonymity, <coughs> as well as the urgency of her appeal. Her? A woman? <coughs> An appeal? Yes, the most appealing woman, too, is Miss Le Breton, from all you've told me. I know no Miss Le Breton. <coughs> do I? <laughs> Mrs. Hudson. Wait, if this lady wishes to remain anonymous. Quite elementary, actually. The quality of training and breeding of the carriage horses is obvious. The expensive gear, the posture of the coachman, even without his customary uniform. <laughs> it is a tremendous relief to learn firsthand that your abilities are not exaggerated, Mr. Holmes. Nor yours, madam. Please allow me to introduce my colleague. Dr. Watson, I presume. Good God, Lily Langtree! As it happens, the good doctor attended your play earlier this evening. Oh, this is an honor, Miss Libre uh, Mrs. Oh, Le to me. Of course, Mr. Holmes. Pardon? Oh, Watson. Uh, Our landlady, uh, Mrs. Hudson. Uh, I'd hoped you wouldn't notice. <laughs> Rather sweet, I think. An attempt to protect me from prying eyes. Precisely. You are both more considerate than I dared hope. Yet it is an act of tremendous daring which brings me to your home this night. Your trust is indeed flattering, Mrs. Langtree, and shall prove, I hope, not misfounded. I'm sure not. And with that, might I come to the point before half the Fleet Street reporters gather outside your door? Please do. You are no doubt aware of certain associations I have developed among society. <laughs> However, distorted the reports may have the press. I should say so. Front page for years, Watson. Scandalous, Watson. <laughs> the distortions, I mean. <clears throat> Well, as to one particular association, no, I will say friendship. There is an element of truth, and it is that friendship which inspires me to call upon you. We are, if nothing else, dear lady, discreet. There is Scotland Yard is not, and cannot be. If a single word of this were to go astray, the consequences are unimaginable. Then let me imagine them for you, Mrs. Langtree. It could only be my most basic duty and privilege as a humble servant to the crown, to your friend, the prince. A personal matter, a family matter. <laughs> it's too horrible. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I come to tears not easily, but to have seen a prince weep. Victoria. Victoria's gone missing. The Queen gone? Not the Queen, Watson. Prince Edward's daughter. Oh, dear Victoria. A young princess. Kidnapped. 